I haven't made a character focus video in a little bit, but here I am. Danganronpa V3 is the final installment in the main series Danganronpa games, is the most modern, but also the most controversial. I'm not particularly surprised as it's known for taking both too many risks and too little simultaneously, got a key on a nutshell, but you get my point, I hope. However, one of the most controversial things, and possibly the most if he was through the ending, is Case 1's protagonist switch from Kaede Yakamatsu to Shoichi Saihara. It's a unique case, as most people agree the twist was smooth and well done, yet they don't like the very adverse effects it had on the story. A lot of people preferred Kaede, thought she was different to other protagonists, and she was a girl. People had to think this, just heads up. People would have preferred Shoichi to switch over to Kaede, and for maybe, even the twist had never happened in the first place. There are people that aren't satisfied with my guy. However, I love Shoichi and he did a good job. If they can share their thoughts, I'd like to give mine the same luxury. Most people believe he's whiny, weak and dependent. I'm not disagreeing, but Makoto and Hajime don't exactly fall into that category. Kayate somewhat does though. See what I'm getting at? I'll share my points and justify them because this, my friend, is an analysis video. I've said it in other videos and I'll say it again, but analysis videos are long. My V3 video flopped hard, so it's time to catch up. Speaking of catching up, help me reach my goal of 1k subscribers by the end of the year. It might sound stupid, but unlike Shuichi, I'd like to make more out of what I'm hopefully somewhat good at. I don't want to be afraid of reaching anything. In fact, I'll welcome it. So of course, if you enjoy, and only if you enjoy the video, like, comment, share even, and maybe subscribe. Thank you, and spoilers for the Danganronpa franchise, of course. Oh, oh. And thank you for 200 subscribers. I'm growing away faster than before, and I can't thank you all enough. I hope my bro Nanaji's still here, though. Love that guy. I think I'll go chronologically. Therefore, I'm kicking off with Shoichi's character in both the prologue and chapter 1. You know, before he had to be more protag-like. Before the peculiar pattern of hair design. Before the removal of his hat. You know, before all that stuff. So, in the prologue, Shoichi isn't fully himself yet, of course. Or maybe he is, but he hasn't reached his real stage. Though he's close enough considering the very literal status of sprite siblings he has with his killing game counterpart, and considering what we see of his personality. The twist could be a lie, so I won't analyse too much, but, you know, seems more like he lost his memories than being a whole different person to me. Screw you, Samugi. Anyway, he's just as anxious, just as insecure, and unlike a lot of other characters in the cast, maintains a key part of his design, that being his hat. Not even Korokiyo has a mask with the zipper, but good old Shoichi Saihara has the exact same hat. It isn't even coloured differently. Why am I ranting about this? I have no idea. Continuing on, this hat really symbolises his role and overall character in the early game, hardly speaking on this prompted by Kaede. Maybe that's why it's kept the same, as his overall character is as well. This is shown best in the trial, where Shoichi spends a marginal amount of time quietly contemplating and thinking on what we now know to be Kaede's failed crime. He would have most likely stayed quiet to be honest, and he'd be immensely afraid of the possible repercussions of his actions if he brought the truth to life. He's also dependent, needing Kaede to cover fire for him in the first trial, and, well, Kaito to take over that role later on. Of course, I haven't brought up the big part of all his early game character, that being Shoichi's bonding scene with Kaede. I rewatched the scene for the sake of writing this part, and it makes me upset even years after looking at V3. The way Kaede takes initiative and holds Shoichi's hand when it's shaking, alongside how Kaede herself shows weakness, these kind of things are what makes Kaede feel different. But I think the cast's different nature helps Kaede feel unique far more than people give credit for. Shuichi is a prime example, and is why it feels somewhat satisfying to see him overcome his severe insecurity. He was clearly made to be like a thing for Kaede to confer her positives through. The way she helps him, gives her more screen time, and more makes that obvious enough. It shows Kaede's kind heart and Shuichi's troubled mind. It's voice crack. In the CG itself, when they speak, it takes place at the time of dawn, as shown by the choice of lighting throughout the room in the previously mentioned CG. This both represents the timing of all the students almost reaching their time limit, just how dawn was reaching the end of the day, alongside showing the light at the end of the tunnel for the darker section of the image that Shuichi resides in. Funnily enough, it feels like this section is both from Kaede's perspective, but also Shuichi. From memory, Kaede doesn't have any thinking dialogue while she holds his hand, which I personally believe supports this. This is the first time Shuichi has a main character moment. The way he tilts his head up towards the end of the scene is nothing short of heartwarming, though his tone of voice doesn't make it sound like he's been fully converted to a confident beast or anything. Okay, I'll try. I don't know if I can, but I'll try. 
there's much more development to go, hence why I feel like him dying would feel a little out of left field as well. Of course, Danganronpa never falls short when it comes to melancholic endings of both characters, games and arcs, see Kyoko. But having Shoichi live his out makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, especially when considering the ending. Though this later stuff is for a future chapter, let's touch on other parts of chapter 1 for now. Shoichi's free time events, while not giving me a lot of material directly from him, show me a lot through Kaede's reactions and thoughts. In true protagonist fashion, I can relate to how she views Shoichi, pondering on if all detectives are compassionate or if it's just him, as well as considering the fact Shoichi is perfect for the detective space due to his desire to both help people and reciprocate assistance through gratitude. This also shows his fear of confrontation similarly to his fear of the truth. When commenting on his parents, instead of complaining about their absence, he pretends to be fine with it. As genuine as it might be, Kaede says he harbors a bitter smile towards the end, which I think was put there for a reason. The same dynamic of their confidence scene I touched on earlier is shown here, and even in the salmon mode, or whatever it's called. That's not on Shoichi's early game version, so I'm not touching on it here. You've most likely noticed I've been mentioning Kaede a lot here, and this trend will continue, just with other characters throughout. Much like the game itself, I'll slowly drift away from talking about Shoichi's influences and more on the person he became. Kaede always tells him to be more manly or confident, that's shown in things like K6. To put a bow on my constant bringing up of Aide, let's dedicate the chapter to her, her death, choices, and all of the pendulous things influences on the character in this video spotlight, Shoichi Saihara. Kaede's execution really screwed Shoichi up. He became emotionally dependent on her from possibly even their first, and other first, interaction to her death. It only makes it worse when, ironically, Shuichi technically caused it, much like the murderer he got arrested all that time ago. Chapter 1 feels somewhat like it's an independent, self-contained story, possibly attributed to Kaede's existence as a protagonist throughout it. However, unlike most stories, it has a bad ending, that being Shuichi's mindset in the last few scenes. He slapped by Kaito, reliving the same trauma he experienced years prior, this time even worse as it was from a place of a sense of security and having an actual death being the consequences of his actions. His cowardice doesn't go unpunished this time around, and as sad as it is in the moment, it of course benefits him later. However, we aren't getting to that yet. We should have a moment of bravery as he accuses Kaede. No, I'm not joking around. Kaede definitely killed Rantaro. And Chiyo pushed it further. The strong girl he grew attached to breaking as well as she bawled her eyes out in front of him post trial. All hope he had was crushed, but it wasn't the end of his story as we know. The moment only solidifies his fear of but it seems to show him the necessity of revealing it. As he himself says later on in the game, the truth is in the eye of the beholder, and so is the lie. Whether it's a lie, truth, or everything is untouched, somebody will always be hurt. He was only scared of hurting himself, and he began to overcome that specific trouble after this trial. When the concept of Kaede being framed pops up later, Shuichi is the one to bring it up. He still has belief and influence from Kaede throughout the whole game, especially if he developed the confidence to overturn the class trial results in the sixth case. He would have never done that before Kaede's death. I'm curious if Kaede would have lived up to what Shuichi did throughout the game, considering a big difference between the two is her stubbornness. Shuichi has that too, but his lack of confidence takes priority. Just as Kaede died because of it in case 1, Shuichi says himself they had to survive through class trials and accepted that fact for a victory in the long run. Kaede definitely would have tried something else, inevitably having her hopes crushed and using the same strategy. Her main quirk is her curiosity, just as Shuichi's is his insecurity and compassion, Makoto's is his hope, Hajime's is his very realistic personality. However, these sorts of things will come up later when I actually make my argument. All I'm saying is the two relied on each other, and the pain would have come either way. Shuichi has the mind and Kaede has the heart, but after chapter 1, Shuichi must take on the role of heart, and compassion as well. I've seen an interesting video by Wins Media on the ideas of Kaede and Samugi opposing each other where Kaede represents fresh air and Danganronpa's heart, however Samugi represents the formulaic, trope-obsessed nature of what the fans don't like in the game. However, I believe Shuichi is more a product of Kaede's heart than Samugi's cold, calculated repetition, hence why he ends Danganronpa and doesn't go for hope or despair. I highly doubt that was scripted, even if other games endings were, to an extent. Time to go with the themes for the last bit of this chapter. Kaede's wish is brought up multiple times after she is incriminated, but never before. This wish proves to me that Kaede reigns supreme on Shuichi's triangle of influences, as well as drawing an interesting parallel to Kaito out of all people. A 
of course, thinking about it. It's foreshadowed as Kaito himself gets the most worked up over Kayane's wish being fulfilled properly to a point of possible jealousy, but he is the supposed parallel of personally caught onto. Kaito does the same thing in Case 5. He has a wish, and much like Kaede, dies believing and being honest, but ultimately lost to a lie, if you can call it that. Kaede does the same thing, believing in everybody, yet lying significantly twice, which results in her demise. She lied about being incriminated, and lied about Shoichi's receiver. Both technically screwed her over in their own ways. Is it really that crazy as to why Samugi shows Kaede and Kaito's clips specifically? She emphasizes that lying to crush his spirit even further than it had been pushed in Chapter 5. I've got a lot more to say about Kaito's relationship with Shuichi, but that's later on. Hakichi will also have his own little section, as he is very relevant to this guy's development. But I'm still laying out the foundation, just paying attention to how intricately the characters and stories are laid out around Shuichi. It feels focused on them, while for other protagonists they typically feel like outsiders. Hachime and Makoto are insecure and in talent, but everyone relies on Kaido and Shuichi respectively. I truly think he's different and hate to see people calling him a repeat. Overall, Shuichi has a cliché nudge of insecurity in Chapter 1 and beyond, but it's so extreme I cannot compare it to Makoto and Hajime's slight hint of insecurity. It's more relevant for Hajime and pops up during the main twist, but it isn't even comparable to Shuichi's. I feel like it's blown out of proportion due to the negative response of Kaede's treatment. Alright, because I'm going on this tangent, let me take a break from Shuichi's relationships and dependence, I'll move on to his and Kaede's independence. Shuichi and Kaede are different from Makoto and Hajime. You know I think this, so here we go. I'll even mention Kamaru because I'm popping off now. Let's begin with Kaede's connections and big offs. Makoto and Kaede are both hopeful leaders, yeah? They're even curious. However, Kaede is more standoffish and occasionally harsh or stubborn, which I think falls into Hajime's ball pit. When you've only had two main protagonists, the main idea is to combine them into the newest, best thing. Unlike the environment of Danganronpa V3, they did a good job with combinations in the realm of Kaede Akamatsu. She has the most charming parts of both to create a character that feels unique and even more charming. I well and truly love her more than most of I will say, if Kaede got one set of props for something she does better than the other protagonists, including Shuichi, and to an extent, protagonists as a whole, including Kamaru, it's relatability. While I personally relate to her charismatic and assertive personality, though for me it truly relies on the circumstance to climb around, I know a lot of people don't. Shuichi, Kamaru, Makoto, and Hajime are all more relatable than Kaede in the realm of vast majority in the fan base. However, my top pros are Kenta, Shuichi, and Kaede. They're so different yet similar, and here's my next thing. I see Kamaru as an independent pro tag, but the other four in pairs. Hajime and Makoto have similar struggles, appearances, and circumstances which I like. Hajime is of course more realistic, ironically, in the less realistic game, and Makoto was more rationally hopeful. However, as I've said, Kaede does share this trait. Back to it though, even the two games come in pairing. Even the two games come in a pairing of sorts. Whether it's style, story, soundtrack, or more, they come together for me. They also come together in Dangan Rumble 3, literally owning either side of the anime and helping each other in the end. UDG feels very different to the other games, however, and as obvious as it may be, I'll explain a little. UDG is of course a shooter game in comparison to the other visual novel mystery ones. Because of this, the pro tag comes off differently due to circumstance. This always happens as you view on something as an opinion, and if one person can view something as bad, yet somebody else views them as good due to persistent interaction or circumstance, that rule can remain for up using the protagonists. Kamaru is pretty badass later on in the game, much more than the other protags, yet is more pathetic than them in the beginning. Maybe equal to Shoichi though. This is because of her extremely violent and action-packed scenario, her badassery is the heroism and cowardice of the failure. She's honestly one of the least insecure people, but also the most. This might just be because she doesn't have an ultimate, however. Unlike Hajime, she knows this. But she also actually has all her memories unlike every other protag, and has someone to protect her, although she's in such a crazy set of circumstances. Now we get to the main guys, Kaede and Shuichi. These two are of course paired up for me as they're in the same game, work together, interact with the same people, and have the same goals. I literally love these two so much, and they're perfect for each other. Regardless of how basic the whole emo plus extrovert thing is, it's cool seeing such a teenage relationship going on in a killing game, much like Sonya's little love triangle with Gundam and Kazuichi. For such a tragic game, a little dose of teenage love is cool. Now, this whole grouping I've brought up is relevant to the fact these two are split up from the others. Don't get me started on the art styles either. Anyway, I've forgotten to compare somebody to Kaede, Kamaru. I gave her a solid chunk of words, but here's the direct stuff. There are of course the two girl protagonists, so let's compare. 
they have two very different views in the world, Kamaru having no belief in herself to go over and beyond, alongside being very dependent. Sounds like somebody else I know, which is why I bet these two would get along great together. However, the similarities they do have is after Toko's introduction, as now they both have a far less confident person with them. Of course, the dynamic in UDG is a lot more equal than the very opposing one in V3, but it is similar. They both have similar approaches, reminding the other to be more confident, but Kaede is definitely a little more straightforward and harsh while Kamara is more weirded out. It makes sense though, Toko can be just as straightforward and she is weirder than Shuichi. I guess technically Toko was a protagonist too, huh? She has the Yohoge, so let's compare them. Toko and Kaede are very different, they both say what's on their mind, but in very different ways, if you couldn't tell. At least they all have another protagonist alongside them, but for Kaede's case, she doesn't know that yet. Now, with Shuichi's comparison, Makoto was similar in about two ways. They're both alienated from their classes in Chapter 1, though for different reasons. It feels more like nobody else likes Makoto and Trigger Happy Havoc, while Shuichi is scared to talk to people in B3. Hajime talks plenty, but has that aura of thinking everyone is really weird, and it shows pretty clearly. So, Shuichi and Makoto both look up to their peers. However, with Hajime and Makoto, they only feel like leaders at the end of Trials and throughout the 6th and sometimes 5th Trials. However, with Shuichi, he feels like a leader in Cases 2 to 6, and you can see it forming at the end of Case 1. He also was far more developed than other protags, but this might only be because it's more obvious. This is what I like to call the Byakuya effect. He had developed, but it was very subtle as you only realise it after it's happened. You only realise Makoto grew more confident when he beat a trial of Junko, and same with Hajime. Shoichi, they kind of point it out to you when it happens, like with him clearly taking his head off. They don't try to be subtle, which might even be a fragment of Kaede, who was never low key. Shoichi is, but his development isn't. I like to see it that way. I won't compare Kaede and Shoichi here besides saying that his confidence is similar to Hajime and Makoto, but not in the same way. Shoichi has a similar vibe to the other two, but he really isn't that similar. He's so nervous, shy, emotional, and quiet in earlier parts of the game and so compassionate later on. Kodo was the closest contender, but Shuichi has an aura of maturity that sets him apart from him. Alright, that was longer than expected, but the comparisons have been concluded. Let's move on to more post-execution stuff, beginning with Kazumamoto and Maki Horikawa. Alright, the other duo in this game, Kaito and Maki. The latter is equal with Shuichi, but Kaito is the example of what Kaede would have been to Shuichi if they both made it past Chapter 1. Shuichi overtaking his previous helper, no longer being a sidekick. Well, technically Shuichi wouldn't be the pro tag, so maybe not, but whatever. This dynamic begins pretty much immediately after Kaede's death, with Kaito slapping some sense into Shuichi in order to help him man up. It doesn't work, but he gives a good few words of advice after this pretty harsh interaction, telling Shuichi to go to Kaede's talent lab and reminisce. Shuichi does this, and you know how it goes. The next day, Kaito's harassment of Shuichi begins, seemingly always getting his doorbell every time he's ready to relax. First time it's in the first morning of chapter 2, causing him to forget his hat, and more times later on, like when the training nights begin. To help Shuichi man up in a far less emotional way than Kaede did, they work out together every night. It seems Kaede focused on the source of his troubles while Kaito tries to get rid of the surface, but Kaito doesn't die in the chapter and therefore manages to help him quite effectively. He's able to depend on Kaito as Shuichi is commonly referred to as a sidekick, and as a result of that, begins to grow more open as a person with the cast. As hopeful as this sounds, the game does grow a bit more gloomy as a result of Shuichi's perspective being so tainted with the negative experiences of his past, but I don't mind. I love Shuichi regardless of these things. Now, this training group continues and as a result, Kaito's constant belief and use of the truth somewhat normalises it to Shuichi, it seems, as he becomes less afraid of the truth. Now, crazily enough, this isn't the only thing Kaito does in relation to Shuichi. Kaito befriends Maki after she's revealed to be the ultimate assassin as well. It's ironic the ultimate detective and assassin are hanging out with each other to be honest, and she asks some tough questions. One of these questions is if he likes Kaede. While Kaito leaves to go use the toilet, probably dying of coughing, Maki says this out of nowhere. Shuichi gets confused, but you can tell he's moving not becoming sporadically depressed at the mention of her, instead asking what Maki asked. I like this, as by this point they're in chapter 3 or 4, I believe. It had been a while since the events of Case 1 took place. Maki has another interesting role in their dynamic, however, and this is in Chapter 5 when Kaito and Shuichi split up, somewhat. Case 4 breaks the two friends apart and as a result shows more of how Shuichi hams conflict again, consistent with his earlier demeanour, avoiding him. Funnily enough, Kaito does this too, showing his best for physical conflict rather than emotional conflict. 
Maki gets them to hang out, but Kaito's charisma turns it into more of Kaito and Maki hang out, unfortunately. This lasts until right before the investigation, when they talk not long before the murder takes place. This conversation is beautiful in the way that it parallels Kaede and Shuichi's last interaction. Kaito places his wish onto Shuichi and tells him not to always do everything himself, but to in fact ask for help when he needs to. This goes against what he says in case 1, which I like. All characters in these dynamics benefit as shown here, whether it's Maki, Shuichi, Kaito, or even Himiko. I'll get to that later though. I just honestly love how this is their send-off, as Kaito's actual last words are more directed to Maki. He quite literally tells Shuichi to take care of everyone else, and it's great. Also appreciate Maki helping the group stop being depressed. Cool beans. Let's move on to Kokichi now, and then we can talk about character development, because I have not mentioned Kokichi at all so far, I don't think. Kokichi Oma Okay, being for real though. Kokichi, to me, arguably influences Shuichi just as much as Kaito does, and definitely more than Maki does. I'll give this gremlin his own chapter, because there's enough controversy to reach a thousand words with him in mind. So, how does he influence Shuichi exactly? Well, if you're wondering, he is a foil to Kaito. This is a well-known fact, and the fact he's opposing Shuichi's bestie creates an antagonist role for him to be placed in. Although, Kokichi very clearly rubs off on Shuichi as well. Shuichi always lied, yes, but he seems to grow a lot more comfortable with lying without becoming less comfortable with being honest. This is because he begins to accept Kokichi's ideologies to an extent, going from angry at Kokichi for lying to simply accepting it as of his death. He begins to believe that the truth is in the eye of the beholder, and I find this satisfying for Shuichi. He began the game scared of an objective truth that both him, Kaede, and Kaito all believed in, to becoming his own person and mixing Kaito and Kokichi's views of the world into his own independent beliefs. The same goes with Maki and Himiko, honestly, so I guess there's a pattern of becoming your own person and moving on from a dependent attitude. Maki kind of becomes dependent, but then grows from it and gradually becomes independent in an emotionally healthy way, given to us that is at the beginning of the game. It's cool. Shuichi is emotionally vulnerable due to Kaede's absence, and it seems Kokichi's inability to trust people caused him to lose the opportunity to take Shuichi's side on things and bond with him. Kaito instead taking that role. The game seems to follow his perspective as Kokichi is painted as a villain when Shuichi sees him as such and vice versa. I think the sudden shift of character is meant to match up with Shuichi's views and makes me realise something. He's pretty damn naive, huh? Makes sense considering his independent nature, but it's worth mentioning. This of course changes by chapter 6, but I'm disappointed he didn't care about Kibo's death. Like, bro made sure you all were alive before self-destructing. Anyway, Kokichi also influences Kaede, which I think indirectly influences Shuichi. Every time Kaede brings everyone together, Kokichi will attempt to break it, either by being disturbingly honest or obviously lying to peeve everyone off. This applies throughout the whole game, even with other characters bringing the cast together. Hence Kaito and Kokichi's rivalry. Kokichi always plants seeds of doubt, and that clearly affected Kaede, possibly increasing her chances of murder, which she, as we know, went through with. Kokichi and Kaito both bring a lot to the table of themes and Shuichi's character, which brings me to the main argument. Cutting this chapter short, because this guy is really shallow in terms of writing. Alright, the main attraction is toward the end of the video. Call this clickbait if you must. Anyway, Shuichi works better than Kaido. Why? because he fits the game better. Whether it's tragic, emotional, and calm personality fitting the cold-coloured, beautiful atmosphere, or his detective ability fitting the themes of truth and lies far more, he works better for this specific game. You could argue Kaede fit in the game better because she didn't fit in perfectly, but I'm making this video for a reason, aka, I disagree, bozo. I've already touched on the main criticism of Shuichi, that being a similarity to previous protagonists. His matching with the game works as well, as this is different from previous games. Every Danganronpa protagonist is someone who doesn't fit in with the rest of the students, yet both Kaede and Shuichi do. However, Shuichi does more than Kaede. Wouldn't it theoretically be better and fresher if he had that happen instead? He's so much more sad than the other protagonists, and even characters overall. The raw emotion conveyed is fresh. The only contrary thing I could say is all of these benefits can go to Kaede as well, since the character writing had clearly improved in Chapter 1 especially, though Shuichi's writing is still great. He goes through so much character development. 
taking Kaede's wish, Kaito's wish, taking care of the group each time, becoming more confident, overcoming his fear of truth and prejudice against the lies, which was a more vague part of his development for those that appreciate subtle character development. And just the way he behaves in K6 is so much more manly than in the prologue. Okay, we'll definitely find Toad. What do you mean, hope? What? I reject that hope! I... I refuse. I won't accept that hope. Shuichi, what's the matter? It's because of hope that this whole thing is happening! I reject that hope! But he's still a compassionate sweetheart. Even when he's helping out Himiko, which too got character development from being apathetic to empathetic and motivated, he's more like a caretaker rather than a troubled child. Shuichi truly changes so much and I love that for him. It's natural too. He rejects his hat and spur of the moment, rejects the concept of hope in the final act, and needs help from his friends to overcome despair as Kaito warned him about. Shows some assertiveness in case one when he loses his composure and more. It's less of him not having some of these traits, but just truly showing how much insecurity and fear can change you. He's the very encapsulation of fear and becomes the embodiment of bravery throughout the game. Together, we're gonna end Dogon Rampa! You've heard this before, but it is truly a benefit of his character overall, and not calling it so would discredit his intricate writing. I mean, you could even sum up his acting in the final K6 to show that not everyone's perfect and he still has his moments. I feel that there is a message here, but before that, another criticism is that Kaede died solely for Shoichi. That's possible. I agree. And it kind of annoys me, but... Tenko died for Himiko, Nekumaru died for Akane, Sakura for Aoi, Gundam for Sonya, Chiaki for everyone, and Kaito for everyone, but especially Maki. Saying things fall in place for Shoichi is true, but saying he didn't work for it all is another thing altogether. He helps those that help him, such as when Shoichi enables Kaede to deduce things and overall make her a decision on whether or not she should attempt murder. My only gripe with this is that Kaede well and truly didn't deserve her death, even though it was so impactful. I fully understand that this rubs you the wrong way, as it would for me too. But I feel as if the despair this causes is what Danganronpa is all about. If you're wondering what I mean by she didn't deserve her death, I mean Sabuki's framing, by the way. Mukuro died for no reason, Sayaka died for no positive reason, and a lot of deaths were not appreciated. Kobokeo has a point where he says death is beautiful, because it can very well be. The impact it can have on those around the dead people themselves is immense, possibly very beneficial. Call me Nagito, because you can see it as a stepping stone in a way. V3 has a lot of problems, and while Shoichi is controversial, I wouldn't say it's one of them. Kaede is good, but so is Shoichi. Do you understand yet? I'll continue trying to nail it in your head till you do, because I care. I want to talk about one more thing here. Shoichi's approach to Gonta's case in Class Trial 4. I'm sure Kaede would do the same, but this is a big moment for both characters for me. This is when I think he has truly satisfied Kaede's wish, hence why the fact she would also do it makes it better. He's so calm, kind, and compassionate. And I actually wanted to cry seeing this, and I still do when I rewatch it now. Seeing Shuichi calmly try to get him to accept what happens is so sad, and the fact that going to trust Shuichi with his life is just another level. It proves he is trustworthy, and he's the leader of the group. This is also when he develops into a hybrid of Kaito and Kokiji's influences. Maybe his growth from Kaito's wish is why Kaito left, because that was his mission. And now yeah, he's not following that wish anymore. He is, once again. He's an independent person because of this hybrid. He doesn't continue to lie to protect Gonta, but instead confronts the truth, which is beautiful in its own way. Peak development for our boy Shuichi Saihara over here, and this is what started the conflict between him and Kaito. Isn't it poetic how one of his big development moments is what causes the divergence? It really foreshadows Kaito's jealousy. That's another thing. The dramatic irony of showing Kaito's illness to the viewer, but hiding it from Shuichi, Maki, and everyone else is awesome. It makes the line of perspective that Shuichi controls for that slight moment every while and helps build tension to the climactic reveal. It makes Shuichi's tragic reaction more believable. Also, another point on Shuichi's uniqueness is a subversion of character compared to someone like Kyoko. I've talked about this in my Trigger Happy Havoc and V3 videos, but he really changes the game of the ultimate detective role. There's implied other ultimate detectives in between the 3rd and 53rd killing games, but I can't exactly talk about those, can I? It's nice seeing someone less cold and calculated, and instead seeing compassion, emotion, and realism. 
As I said, Kayate thinks Shuichi is all of these things and helps him find confidence, yet Makoto helps Kyoko find space to express her emotion. Both lack confidence in their opposite fields. I guess it's also a subversion because the detective actually knows they're a detective. In case 6, Sumugi says Shuichi is reverted to his old self when he breaks down over fighting for a lie. He rejects hope and despair, like how he believes in truth and lies. It's all connected. Alright, we're finished with that now. Let's talk about similarities to other protags as he grows to be more protagonist-like over time, which is interesting as others grow less protag-like over time. In a way, I'll explain. I've been spinning bars with these chapter names, no idea why, but I have been. So, I touched on Shuichi's character in chapter 1. This will be the grand finale as I touch on his character beyond development in chapters 2 to the epilogue, alongside Ultimate Summer Camp, Ultimate Heart Development Plan, and the Summon version of V3. Here we go, this will be a doozy if I've learned anything from my Nagito video. Oh, dang it, Rumpares. In chapters 2 to 6 and the epilogue, Shuichi is of course more confident and talks a lot more as is now the protagonist. He becomes more like the others, including Kaede, compared to his support counterpart, being the helper of everyone's problems and being far more upfront with his deductions and trial. Of course, the canon explanation for this is Kaede's wish, and that's cool. It's harder to have a protagonist that doesn't talk in Danganronpa, and while you technically could, every character has a fan base. You'd be discrediting Shuichi if you just took away half his lines. He has a lot of lines though, thankfully. Like, a lot. Jeez. Okay, so Hajime and Makoto are both talkative to an extent, especially when they're engaging in closing arguments. Shuichi follows through, with, and Kaede talks quite a lot in a section of the first trial as well. Kamaru talks a ton in the game too. As Shuichi catches up to Hajime and Makoto, you also enter the case 6 big man confidence scene, which Shuichi handles a little differently. Firstly, Kibo, Maki, and Himiko are the protagonists for the section as well, but primarily Kibo. He takes over for roughly half an hour or so, fighting for hope until Shuichi does the coolest thing ever. Hajime rejected hope and despair, but Shuichi rejected everything. He breaks down, yelling at the mastermind, the audience, and the world itself. I could never imagine the old Shuichi doing this, hence why you need to play as somebody else. Shuichi has a very interesting outlook on it all. Using his detective mindset to concur Rontaro's ultimate survivor status proves that hope is ruining everybody. Hope continues the killing game, and it's an interesting message. So, Shuichi is a big man. How about in the other media? I mean, he interacts with Kaede in his canonical post chapter 1 form, so it's an interesting set of scenarios to cover. Kaede and Shuichi laugh a lot in the salmon mode, and he is really awkward to be honest. Like, real socially awkward. In Danganronpa S, he also sucks at talking to women, which I can see when he tried to compliment Kaede's swimsuit. Yeah, I'm a little biased on talking about his interactions with Kaede, but you catch my drift. Shuichi also tries to help people a lot, as I've said. He takes on jobs to investigate things such as a ghostly presence taken in the photo as well as Nagito's past, though it's not really helping Nagito as much as it's the other way around, and says he's enjoyed the times he's had in his Hope Fragment scene. He's very down to earth and relaxed, and it's nice seeing him relax after the hell that V3 is. Really harsh on the surviving cast to be honest. A lot of his events are themed around training actually. Him and the rest of the trio interact with Byakuya, which quickly flusters him unsurprisingly. He also chats with Sakura and more. Overall, there's nothing too eventful in terms of proving my previous points, just that he's a very strong character and was deserving of the protagonist role. Am I going overboard by bringing all these unrelated pieces of media up? I don't know. If you looked on the video this long, then is it really that disdainful? Okay, ultimate talent development plan. I haven't talked about this in my Nogito video, but I will here. Kyoko comforts Shuichi on his detective talent in a really interesting way, saying that their differing strategies both work so well yet are so unique that they're both able to be ultimate detectives. In a dumbed down way at least. This is because of Shuichi's trait to being prone to a negative attitude of course, though he gains a newfound courage soon after. Also, Munro gets mad at him. That's funny. Kaede and Shuichi have tons of moments where they both rely on each other and I love it. Whether it's Shuichi hunting down Monokuma and Kaede, making sure he doesn't overwork himself, or Kaede needing Shuichi's comfort for a concert with Sayaka, ending in them having dinner plans after and getting more nervous yet excited. They want alone time. She also cheers him on when he's playing table tennis with Yoma. So sweet, huh? He continues to bond and work out with Kaito on top of that, and it's wonderful seeing the relationships built in V3 further develop here. Shuichi Saihara is a character like no other, and a great protagonist. Out of all the protags, his flaws are the most undeniable and realistic to me. Hajime and Makoto's biggest flaws are either being naive or insecure, and that's pretty much it. 
But with Kayane and Shoichi, they both have realistic flaws outside of their mindsets. Shoichi's actions in Case 6, self-pessimistic yet overall optimistic outlook, awkward behaviour or normal nervous approach are all things you could say are flaws. Kayane's boldness, stubbornness and overdose of hope are also flaws she has, and there's space for naivety in there as well. Kamaru has a bunch of flaws too, so don't get me started on that. Rin and thought, but did you know every game has an annoying character beginning with T? Toko, Teru Teru, Toa, last name, yeah, and Tenko, Kazia, right? Please don't flame me for my flurry of insults, but I just thought of that randomly. Anyway, I think that's about it. It isn't telling me to be myself here, not yet. I want to truly really conclude this first. Shuichi is a good protagonist, whether it's his fitting with the themes, cast, atmosphere, his unique personality, design, changing of sprites, character development, amazing K6 voice acting, cool and expressive sprites, character dynamics and relationships, or his badass moments that come out of nowhere. I love this guy just as much as I love Nagito, depending on the day. I feel like he is worthy of replacing Kaede, and possibly even better. I feel like that twist was beneficial, and if it had taken such a long time to write, it definitely wasn't just for shock value. It clearly had meaning and reason behind it, and I hate to see Shuichi as a protagonist unappreciated. Also, isn't it interesting how Hajime Hinata and Shuichi Saihara have alliterative, na have alliterative names? Maybe we should have known Kaede would die because her name wasn't alliterated. Shame. <coughs> We ignore Peko Peko Yama, who was alliterative with more than just a letter, but her whole first name. But yeah, Shuichi is a good protagonist. I probably lost my train of thought a lot, but I like it that way. It's now saying, be yourself now, OMG. So I also realized in my last two videos <sighs> that I don't edit these parts of the videos. So there's like burping and coughing and sniffing and yawning, like just what happened. So. Hope you guys are okay with that, because there is a lot of that in the rest of the video. I just always cut it out. Same with stuttering. But yeah, um, this is going to be pauses, because this isn't scripted. This is all from the heart. But as I was writing this script, I realized another problem is Kaede was done dirty more than Shuichi's necessarily bad. It is that Kaede really dirty. I touched on it with the whole Kaede only died for Shuichi, but it's true. Though they do other characters dirty as well. I get that her being a protagonist and an actually good character changes out of it, but, you know, I just feel like that's despair for you. That's Danganronpa. So, I don't know. It makes me upset, but they did Hiyoko dirty. You know? They did Taka very dirty. Like, extremely dirty. They did... Who else? They did Sakura very dirty as well. They, they, they do say she was happy in death, but, I don't know. Kaede was optimistic when she died, so does that count for something? I don't really know. But, um, I hope this video works because the V3 video flopped real hard. And maybe just the V3 property itself just isn't very good at getting any attention. But I don't know. Could have just been the algorithm. Um, I hope people also see this video because, you know, I want people's opinions on V3 to change a little bit. Like, they're always so overwhelmingly negative. And while I can kind of agree how bland it is, like, it's pretty beautiful when it comes from a retrospective standpoint. Like, I don't know. It fits that beautiful vibe that the V3 has, the elegance of it all. And I just feel like it's really underutilized. It's, it's discredited a lot. And it's underrated. I love V3. And I'm going to continue to. The logo is so clean, by the way. Like, visual designs, everything is so good. And if you want to know more about that, I have another 20, 30 minute video on that. That, you know, I need people to watch a little bit. Because I feel like, for the same reason I just said, that's important. Anyway, once again, thanks for 200 subscribers. And I'm still hoping I can reach 1k. But if I can't, then that's fine, obviously. Um, I just really want to start doing stuff out of this. Like, I'm trying to remain committed. It's been a month now. So that's one of 12. I feel like a year is a good sample size. So let's just see what happens, I guess, you know? Um, right. Bye bye. I will be making more videos. I think the next one will be about Gundam because I want to touch on Case Four in Danganronpa Two. And also, I just haven't made a Danganronpa Two video yet, unless you want to count the Nagito one. But that's for like every single game. All right, for real now though. Bye bye.